move the limbs on anyone in Photoshop. Um, you can do it for a few other things. I'll show you an example um, of something I did with an elephant a bit later. Um, but we'll just start with this image I got from Unsplash. Like always, link in the description to the image. So first of all, I will duplicate the layer with Control or Command J. Then what we want to do is separate the person from the background, just so we can manipulate the person without screwing up the background. So the easy way to do this is click over here, the object selection tool. If yours doesn't look like this, click and hold. I'll bring up these options. So yours might look like the quick selection tool at the moment, but just hit object selection. Now what it does is Adobe, if you've got the newer version, will automatically detect subjects and backgrounds and things with its AI. Um, or you can just hit select subject and it'll do a pretty good job at choosing the subject you want, which it did. did a pretty good job. Now what we want to do is hit command J or control J. So you've just got a layer just of the person. And now you want to go back into the under layer, under layer, background layer and remove the person from the image and just have a clean background, just so that when you're changing the top layer, the bottom layer is not pushing through, if that sort of makes sense. I'll try and show you a bit later on. So what we need to do is select the subject again. And what we want to do is expand our selection a little bit, just so that we've got some of the background and then use content aware fill to fill in the gaps. Um, I've got a tutorial on how to use content aware fill and a few other techniques on how to remove things from an image. Um, I'll leave it a link in the description and if I can figure out how these cards things work. Um, yeah, so anyway, so once you've got your selection, go to select, modify, expand. I reckon 50 pixels should be enough and hit OK. And you can see what it did. It just pushed out the selection 50 pixels from all directions. Now hit shift delete grab this little fill box, make sure it says content aware and just hit okay. And there you go. So now you can just add the person in and remove him however you like. So the next step is to actually start playing around with the puppet tool. So click your um, subject layer, so mine's layer two. Go to edit, puppet warp, and I'll do this cool thing where it draws a mesh over your subject. You can change the density of the mesh. Um, oh, that's not density. This one is. To have more points or fewer points. I tend to just keep it at normal. To be honest, I don't use this a whole lot. It's just kind of fun to play around with if you want to mess around with an image. So you'll be presented with a little, like your cursor will turn into a pin. It's like a thumbtack. And the way I sort of think about using this is I want to put it in the spots where there's a joint. For example, elbow. Um, the hand is like a pivot point, the shoulder. And if I were to just use these bits, you can click and hold any of these spots and move, and it'll try and move the image from those pivot points. But you can see how the person, like the body is moving as well. I don't really want that. So in my head, I'm like, I'll draw the spine. So now this should be locked in place. I can move these without the body moving. So you can just play around with it. You can move a little bits at a time. It does look like a bit of a wet noodle a lot of the times, but the little adjustments like raising his hand up, it can look okay except for no one's arm bends like that. But it's just a bit of fun to play around with. You can click over here. And move the arm down. Looks like he's doing I'm um, a little teapot. Actually, let's make him do that. There you go. Ooh, that was bad. And yeah, whenever you're done, you just hit, hit this check mark. It looks weird. You wouldn't really use this that often, but like I said, it's just a tool that you can play with. And what I meant before by removing him from the image so it doesn't conflict with the underlying layer. If I to turn this layer back on, so this is my original background layer with the original image, and then I put in 
the newly modified dude. It looks weird because it's not removing the original guy. So I don't know what that looks like, but it looks pretty bad. So that's why we, we aim to just have a clean background. So a clean background, remove the subject, and yeah, then modify the subject however you want on, on the top of a clean background. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. It's, it's a bit of fun just to learn all the little tools that you can use in Photoshop. Um, I'll quickly try and put on a video of me modifying an elephant's trunk for a collaboration I did um, on Instagram. Um, I'll try and make that play now, um, just so you can see an actual practical application of using this. But yeah, thanks for, thanks for clicking the video and hope you like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff and have a good one. Thanks.